Hello, beautiful soul family. Rebecca here, your vibe mentor. And this continues to be the place for conscious purpose driven entrepreneurs who are looking to remove the blocks that hold you back from your purpose so that you can manifest abundance through it. I'm super excited for this video today because I have been thinking about it for so long and had so many things going on and it just never became the top priority. And when I sat down for guidance today on what to talk about, this was the theme. So super, super excited. Emotions. Let's talk about emotions. And it's not going to be your typical average video around how to process and release emotions. We've talked about that. I've got plenty of videos on that. There's plenty on YouTube if you need guidance around that. Certainly that's what I do in coaching, but I really want to dig into the purpose of emotion and why our entire existence here on earth is about emotion. I don't think we've given it quite the appropriate level of attention and weight in our existence here. So this is going to be fun and amazing. I'm super excited. I love, love, love talking about this. So we'll, we'll dig in real quick here before we do, I want to tell you coming up the first week of June, I have started something called the more than enough mastermind. It's an eight week intensive accelerator. We are going to catapult you from the stuck aspiring purpose-driven entrepreneur to healed and ready and ready to be seen the shining bright light worker that you are meant to be. If you're curious about the stages of how to go from stuck to the synchronized master as far as becoming that that thriving entrepreneur in your purpose that you are designed to be. Check out those videos. I have videos on the stages of uh, becoming the um, synchronized master for purpose-driven entrepreneurs. So there's about four or five videos, I think, on that one. So check that out. But this accelerator, this mastermind is going to be freaking amazing because I am, I've been offering um, one-on-one coaching and I've seen the patterns. I've seen what needs to be addressed. I've started to see how we can accelerate this. I do something called trauma spotting, which works with somatic healing therapies and energy healing to heal the body. And I have traditionally offered to my students who have gone through the one-on-one coaching year-long intensive um, the certification for trauma spotting. Well, now I'm going to offer it in the eight week intensive where we, the mastermind, where we go deep. And so you're going to get, if you join us today, there'll be a link below. Um, you'll get two free one-on-one sessions with me as a part of the program. We'll meet initially in the first week. So you can actually sign up for that first one-on-one session right away. As soon as you sign up, we'll dig into what is your deepest wound? Where is the root of the weed that holds you back? And then that will give you sort of the foundation or groundwork for the next six weeks where we meet as a group. I will teach you how to do trauma spotting. I will do a demo with one volunteer each week, and then we'll break out into groups where you and your partner also give each other um, trauma spotting sessions. And so you'll be able to work directly on your issue that's specific to you and relative to the topic of the week. We'll do that for six weeks. And then we'll do a a wrap up week um, with additional one-on-ones to sort of wrap everything up so I can make sure that we really extracted the root of your weed that holds you back so that you can catapult yourself into your purpose. And I'm so, so excited because this allows us not only to condense what used to take a year into eight weeks, but also to to teach this modality because it works, because everyone on earth, their purpose is my purpose. I need to be able to do this uh, at a mass scale. I need, I need you all. We're all meant to do this together. I, no one, no man is an island. No man can do this alone. So I'm really, really excited to teach you guys how to do this. It's going to be amazing. Join us. The link is below. So emotions are a big piece of this, right? Emotions are what get stuck in us. So when we experience a traumatic situation in childhood or a toxic relationship of any kind throughout any point of your life, the emotions get stuck in the body. We also live in a society where they have taught us that emotions are bad, right? Especially the men. I feel so um, passionately about helping men, especially because to be the ultimate highest potential, to be the best man you can be, 
understanding and and working with your emotions are critically important. And that doesn't mean be soft. It doesn't mean be feminine. It doesn't mean, although you have a balance of masculine and feminine, not trying to feminize men at all. I need, not I need, we collectively need men to be able to work with their emotions because when we suppress emotion, we suppress our power. And it doesn't mean emoting. There's a difference between understanding and utilizing your emotion versus breaking down and spilling your emotions everywhere irresponsibly. There's a difference, right? So society has told us to suppress our emotions. Why they did it, I'm not going to go into conspiracy theories here, but it happens to be um, the number one biggest issue in our collective society today. And I recognize that I, I usually am very careful not to make um, broad sweeping statements, nor statements that are not proven by science um, or research, but this one is my personal opinion, and I'm going to just label it that and continue on. Because what I see and I've said before that I think a vast majority of the world has experienced complex trauma. Really what I think it is, is just a lack of emotion, understanding of emotion um, and, and emotion processing or healing, right? We could call it trauma healing because trauma healing works for repressed emotions, which I think is pretty safe to say the entire world has some level of emotion that is hiding in them that they have not learned how to work with. So what is an emotion? This is a really important conversation or um, delineation that we need to, to establish before we have this conversation. An emotion is different than a feeling. You cannot always trust your feelings. You can trust your emotions. So an emotion is something that arises in the body before the mind attaches a story to it. So an emotion comes from the body. A feeling comes from the mind. So we'll use an example. Let's say, um, I should have thought of this before, but I always go to the example of um, being cut off in traffic. Not sure why that is, but if someone were to cut you off in traffic, you might have that bodily response of like, <gasps> right? You, you have the emotion that comes from the body that says, that's a dangerous situation, pay attention, right? It's waking you up. It's sending the, the cortisol and the adrenaline to the proper areas of the body to get you to move, right? To get you to turn or to get you to break. From there, if you have the story that comes from the mind of everybody always does that to me or what a jerk, or that is the story that the mind has attached to the emotion. So the, the story often is tainted by your previous experiences, your, if you experience trauma, your, I like to call it the trauma brain, really, the little trauma demon that sits on your told, shoulder and says, there's something wrong with you. Everybody always cuts you off. You must be a bad person, right? It catastrophizes and sends you down the rabbit hole of everything's awful and bad and the world is coming to an end. That's a feeling. That's what you can't trust. The body, the emotion, the sensation that comes from the body is something that you can trust. Trust your body. I have done many videos on this. Go ahead and search it, but I will speak to it a little bit here. Your body is your best friend. This is another sort of program from society right now is that our body is not our friend. Our body is not good enough if it doesn't look like the, the perfection that they put on the billboards, right? That, that oftentimes we disconnect or distract or try to get away from. It's called disassociation. We try to get away from the body because the body seems to be our source of pain, but really the body is just trying to communicate to you to keep you safe. It's trying to help you. It's also important to remember that the breath of life courses through your body. The body is the temple that houses your soul. It's like the mother that nurtures and holds the little baby inside of you. God, source, creator, divine universe, stardust is in your body. Your body is precious. Your body is trustworthy. Your body is your friend. Emotions are coming from the body. The body is often the first to know, or what we'll, we'll actually say the, the mind is often the last to know whether or not the body is the first is debatable. That's a topic for another day, but the body knows before the mind. And so that's what we want to notice here. The body is communicating through emotion to you. Emotion is your emotional guidance system, your EGS, Right. Emotions can be trusted, right? Even the trauma, the trauma response can be trusted. It's designed to save you, designed to help you, designed to, I don't want to say save you, designed to help you and keep you safe. 
right? Emotions are not good or bad. There are no bad emotions unless you hold on to them and they become toxic because you haven't released them. Emotions are not good or bad. They're just information. They are trying to tell you, turn left, turn right, do more of that, do less of that. If I get angry, it's a cover for pain and it's designed to get me to move out of the situation that has caused the pain because it's not good for me. Anytime you are struggling with a decision and you don't know what to do, you can close your eyes and imagine yourself in the situation, option A, and then imagine yourself in situation option B and notice how it feels. Your body will tell you what feels good to you. And that has been sort of demonized. People are like, you can't follow your feelings or if you only ever do what feels good, you'll never succeed. And I'm not, it, we're talking about a very different thing here. People who are in the habit of binging Netflix and eating bags of potato chips while they do, they will say that feels good but it doesn't. And we all know that because if you sit on the couch all day and watch Netflix and binge, you know, a series and eat a whole bag of Cheetos, I've done that. <laughs> it doesn't feel good. It might be a delicious bite or two, but by the end of the day, you feel like crap. So this is being honest with yourself and being truthful, brutally honest with yourself and say, what really, really feels good, right? Not from an ego standpoint, but from an honest, heart-centered, body-grounded place, right? We are actually here to experience emotion. I am of the belief, I have received the guidance, and it resonates as absolute truth in my body. One of the primary reasons we are here is to experience emotion. Emotion is also our source of creation. That it is our frequency and our vibration, if you ever get the, the the guidance like I do, use your magic, right? The numbers that I see, 888-333-838-338-883, all the different combinations. It's telling me personally, that's one of my personal numbers, use your magic, learn how to use your creative abilities, learn how to use your emotions. This is why it's so critically important. The number one rule on earth here in this lifetime is do no harm. That's why I love yoga. Do no harm. Our, our harming others is creating negative emotion, is creating more, uh, well, I said negative, right? It's creating an emotion that will create something that is undesirable, right? There's a difference there. We don't want to cause others to create against their free will. And we do that when we hurt other people. We don't realize that when we hurt other people, there's a ripple effect. And we all experience the, the karma, the results of that ripple effect. And it is up to us then to clean up the mess again, collectively, right? So emotions are our source of creation. Our creative power comes through our emotion. So I, I talk about this all the time. It's worth repeating. How the manifestation mechanism works is we choose beliefs likely based on early childhood. From there come our thoughts. From our thoughts, our body is then flooded with the chemistry that creates the emotion, that creates the, vibrant, uh, the vibration, that creates the attraction point, right? So if I have a negative thought, I'm going to be flooded with stress hormones. I'm going to feel like crap and I'm going to have a low vibration and I'm going to have a low frequency and I'm going to attract more of the same. The same happens for positive thoughts, right? I love my favorite statement lately was I have the, the wealthiest sugar daddy in the entire universe and he loves to take care of me. Life is delicious and amazing. And I'm so blessed to be here in this body. I love who I am. I love who I'm becoming. I'm so proud of who I am and it's all because of my creator, right? That creates such beautiful chemistry in my body, such a beautiful emotion, such a frequency that just keeps attracting more and more beautiful things. It just keeps getting better and better every day in every way. And the momentum that is gained, that is powerful. That's how we create heaven on earth. This is why I say no one is coming to save us. It is up to us to learn how to use our magic to make the world a better place, to make the world that we want to see. Be, what is it, uh, the statement, be the change you want to see in the world. 
it's amazing how we can hear these things, but until we embody it, it doesn't quite click the way that it was originally intended, likely. Who am I to say that's the original intent, but that's what it works. That's what works for me here. So what happens when we repress emotions? It builds up. It takes up all of our energy to contain. It creates fatigue and exhaustion. We have nothing left to create something that we do desire. Notice if you are tired and fatigued, it is not because of the external environment. It's because of the thoughts and the emotions that are not aligned to truth that are causing you to feel like crap to give you the emotion that says you're off track, emotional guidance system, right? We are recreating more of the past. If we are not consciously creating with intention, what we desire, we are recreating more of what we do not desire. And then of course that will attract to us more of the things we don't desire because it's pointing to us to show us where we need to let go, where we need to clear out emotion and where we need to heal. And it will gain momentum. So you will notice you can gain momentum either way towards the desirable or the undesirable towards the positive or towards the negative. And when we clear out, this is why trauma spotting is so critically important. You have to use somatic healing therapies. You have to be able to work with the body to clear out the body. The body is just so bogged down with all of these repressed emotions and limiting beliefs from all of the, the toxic relationships and experiences and 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 inaccurate perceptions that we have chosen, right? The, the programming and the conditioning that is misaligned to truth. When we clear that out, we start to gain momentum towards our desirable outcomes. If we are repressing, it eventually will come out. The body can only handle so much. So then you're just exploding in irresponsible ways on different people in different situations and it's not pretty. <laughs> it clouds our judgment. Repressed emotion overcomplicates things. It causes us to feel like we need to be hypervigilant and we need to hustle and grind and hurry and rush. And it prevents stillness. And it keeps us from dropping into the heart, the generator of all emotion and creation is the heart. But it gets so closed down because it needs to protect itself. You're so afraid of being stabbed in the back because you have this belief that people are unsafe because you didn't heal that wound. It gets in the way of our guidance system. It clouds our perception. It literally, the mind is the veil of illusion. Perception, belief, thoughts, repressed emotion. We have come to believe that we are a victim to our circumstances. And it simply is not true. We are not subject to feel the way our external environment indicates maybe we might have the right to feel. So what that means is that many of us are going through life in a reactive mode. I see something, I react. I see something I don't like, I'm upset. I see something I do like, I'm happy. Well, if your happiness is dependent on things going your way, ask yourself, how often do things go your way? And are you willing to settle for that small percentage of happiness? Or are we ready to do things a different way? Like Einstein says, doing things, doing the same thing over and over, expecting a different result is the definition of insanity. It's not working. <laughs> I think this is kind of what I, I like I get confused by is we just keep doing the same thing over and over, generation after generation after generation, expecting a different result and it doesn't work. When are we going to stop doing what we're doing and try something different? It's time. Now. Now is the time. We have to start to choose to be happy. We are no longer going to allow ourselves to be subject to the emotions our environment creates. It may have been true in childhood that you couldn't control it, but it is no longer true now. You have a choice. We can choose our emotions. I can say, I'm going to be happy no matter what happens. Everything's always working out for me. Everything always works in my favor, even if it doesn't look like. It. We can create any state once we have the skills. First, you have to do the healing. You're going to have to get that emotion out of you, somatic healing therapies, the, the trauma spotting therapies that I offer or someone else. It doesn't matter. Join us for the mastermind if you want the accelerated version. 
but you have to start to do something different. We can choose to be happy. We can choose to romanticize our life. We can choose to see the beautiful in every moment. And the more you see it, the more it comes. You can choose to romanticize your life. Make it a beautiful movie. Exaggerate. Be delusional. It's actually the key to the game. Being realistic actually isn't all that it's cracked up to be. <laughs> What is reality? You create your reality. We can choose to see miracles all around us and know that we are miracle magnets. We can choose to know that we have everything we need inside of us right now. We can choose to know that we have the wealthiest sugar daddy in the entire universe. We can choose to remember that stillness creates more than hustle. We can choose to balance the woo and the do, as my coach likes to say. We can choose to know our perfection as we are without rejecting the current version of ourselves. I'm going to say that one again because it's really important. We can choose to know, to know our perfection already exists right here and right now. There's nowhere to go and nothing to do. And you don't have to re reject your current version of yourself to tap into that. You can choose to know it, choose to see it, choose to feel it. It's all there waiting for you, just waiting for you to rise up to see it. And it all starts with the beliefs that you cling to and the thoughts that you choose. You can do this, my friends. I love you so, so very much. Please do join us for the mastermind. This is the accelerated version in eight weeks or less. You could be ready to be in this place where you can make your dreams come true, where you can be the purpose-driven entrepreneur that you are, know you were designed to be. You are perfectly imperfect for your purpose. Every ounce of you is perfect, just as you are. I love you, my friends. I will see you on the next video. Click the link below to join us for the mastermind starting in June. Talk soon.